now we have learned all the intervals in the previous lesson i'll uh, teach you a trick to remember the intervals uh, in an easier way when someone asks you what's the major third interval from c what you do is you take the c major scale and count the third note from c so which is c d e so the major third interval from c is going to be 1 2 and 3 which is a third in a major scale which is a major third note which is the e note Taking another example, if someone asks what's the minor third from D, then uh, just take the D minor scale and count the third, you have D, E, F. So the minor third from D is going to be an F note. So we'll take a different example for now. What's the perfect fourth from F? Now, when they say perfect four or perfect five, you, you can choose either the major or the minor scale because both these scales have perfect fourth and perfect fifth as a common note. So it's the same uh, notes in both major and minor scale. The perfect fourth from F is going to be F, G, A, B flat. So the perfect flow from F is a B flat. Even if you take the minor scale, you have F, G, A flat, B flat. So anyway, you will end up with a B flat note. So if you want to find the perfect fourth, then you can either choose between the major or the minor scale. An important thing to note what I taught is not going to work for the minor second interval because in a natural minor scale we'll be playing a major second actually the distance between the first and the second note is a major second interval if someone asks you what's a minor second uh, from A so it means it's the note after A so the second interval is supposed to be a B so it's a B flat note so the benefits of uh, learning intervals and uh, where exactly we use them is uh, almost everywhere because uh, everything that we play be it chords or scales it's basically notes and we are playing distance between each note as well so it's all everything is related to intervals but uh, commonly we use this for ear training so we start from a root note and uh, we usually train ourselves to uh, sing the major second from the root, the major third from the root, you have A, B, B, and you have A, C sharp, A, C sharp. You can either play the C sharp here or you can play the C sharp here. So that's a major third interval. So when you listen to songs later on after the ear training, you would be easily able to identify the intervals just by hearing. And another benefit of learning intervals is uh, we'll, we'll actually get a good knowledge of our fretboard using intervals because uh, it, it's built in such a way that all the shapes throughout your guitar repeat itself. It's basically intervals again. So same case I start from a C note here. If I want to play a D note, I'll play the D here. So this G and my D is on the 5th string, 5th fret. So if I can do this here, then it will repeat itself from the other G. So if I am playing a G here, we don't have to be searching for the D note. I automatically know that it's here. So it's basically the same shape repeating itself. And if you, even if you take the next G, the D is automatically going to be there. It's called the 5th interval. Perfect 5th interval. Take the next G, the D is going to be here. So it's easy to memorize your fretboard if you know intervals. Taking another example, you have G. So if I'm playing the major third interval, it's just G and B, which is on the fifth string, second fret. When I take the next G, next soft F G, my B is going to be here, the same place. Next G, my B is going to be here, the same place throughout the fret. So G and B is basically a major third interval. So that way it's easier to memorize the notes on the fretboard easily. And uh, intervals are again used in uh, solos, you would have heard people play uh, like this. So what I'm playing here is again intervals. We'll also be using uh, intervals in solo phrasing as well. So. Now let's have a small test. Uh, let's actually uh, 
see if you have understood the theory properly so i'm going to be asking you a uh, few particular intervals from uh, different root nodes i just want you to answer them and post your answers in the comment section so minor third interval from a so you take the a minor scale you'll have to tell me what's the third note of the a minor scale so that'll be your minor third interval now major six from e and what's the major seventh interval from g the last one what's the minor second interval from d so leave your answers in the comment section i'll let you know if it is right so we'll be learning improvisation in uh, upcoming lessons and at that point of time i'm going to be mentioning the notes with their interval names so i'll be asking you to play the fifth interval from g you should automatically know that it's a d note the major third interval from g which is a b note so uh, try not to skip this lesson it's such an easy theory to understand and play so uh, make sure that you get the intervals done now we learn an interesting theory about intervals we are basically going to see how your guitar is built so most of you would have thought uh, why there's only e b c d a e strings why is it not c f sharp b flat or any other notes except for e b c d a e there's a very good explanation for it so they basically started with the e and uh, the interval between e and a which is a 6th and 5th string it's a perfect fourth e so it's e f g a so again from a to d it's a perfect fourth interval so a b c d between d to g it's again a perfect fourth d e f and g so it's all stacks of perfect fourths and between g to b you're wrong it's a major third interval it's not a perfect four there and i'll tell you why so between g to b it's a major third it's g a b and what's the interval between b and e it's again a perfect four it's b c d e now why is uh, the interval between the g and b a major third interval and the rest are all perfect fourths is because it's again a simple theory when we hold bar chords we actually bar the entire fret here so same case for example the interval between the second and third was a perfect fourth then this note which is on the second string would have moved to the previous fret which is here then it would have become really difficult for us to hold the bar chords because we wouldn't have enough fingers to hold the notes on the bar chord so to make the chords fingering easy they made it a major third interval and also for the reason that so when we play uh, particular scales you'll find that scales are uh, in symmetrical shapes which is again because of the major third interval there so if it had been a perfect fourth then it would have been a little confusing to learn scales as well so we'll be learning this at a later stage this is just for you to understand why it's a major third between g and b so and another interesting thing with the same theory is this we have the e major shape we know the chord already now it should have been an a major if you brought this down by one string but the interval between the second and third as a major third so what we'll have to do is we'll have to push this note higher by one fret so that's how you get your a major shape and again if you bring down the a major shape it should have been a d major but again it's a major third interval here so we'll have to push the note which is on the second string higher by one fret half a step so your shape would become this so the d major fingering would come so d major and a major is basically the evolution of the b major changing shape quite interesting isn't it so there are a lot of other simple hacks that we can learn through intervals we'll be learning that in the upcoming lessons so try not to skip this lesson it's pretty simple and it gets very interesting 